What's up, everybody out there in YouTube land? Welcome back to the Red Cup Review. As always, I'm your host, Rob Banks, and today we're looking at the mess that is my desk. No, the Gambit 112 Collective Mezco figure, as brought to us by Ageless Geeks. Also, go check out Tiny Pants Tailoring. They actually canceled their pre-order and allowed me to jump in their slot at Ageless Geeks. Ageless Geeks. Ah! And allowed me to get this Gambit figure. So, hope you guys enjoy the review. Stay tuned. <laughs> We're going to kick this one off with a height comparison, and as you can see, Gambit is about a head and a half taller than Wolverine. He's about a quarter of a head taller than Cyclops here. He's tall and slender. He pretty much is exactly the way he's supposed to be. I wanted to show you guys this right off the bat because it stuck out to me that Gambit, even in hand, felt a little bit bigger than your average Mezco, and that's obviously because of the big poof on top of his head. An old 90s haircut. Now, I display my Mezco X-Men with my Mezco X-Men, so this is pretty much how they're going to look together on a shelf. You got the Wolverine with his legs spread out a little bit, ready for action. That's how I kind of display him. So you'll really get that idea of the differenti the differentiation in height if you display him kind of relatively the way I have them here. Moving along, we're going to take a look at the portraits now. And the portraits really shine on this figure. They're excellently well done. The individual strands of hair are excellently sculpted. Just take a look at the irises and just really look at the detail and how there's absolutely no bleed between the dots of his eyes and the actual red uh, irises that Gambit has that he's known for. Very, very well done. The skin tone is borderline perfect. Again, guys, I'm sorry I have the, the real high highlights on this figure, so I don't know if you guys are seeing the actual paintwork in the face, but the face is not as... Why the hell is it so damn blurry? It's, it's just really well done. There's, there's uh, you know, a couple of imperfections in the skin, which makes it look that much more realistic. And the mustache and goatee. At first, it, I wasn't sold on the paintwork on it. It's actually very, very, very well done. Take a look at that. At first, I wasn't sold on it, and now I most certainly am. Very good. And the eyebrows have no bleed in them. They look very well done, too. There could have been a little bit more black wash in his hair. However, to add a little bit more depth... Right, so they could have used another layer of paint on the hair sculpt, but I'm not going to complain too much because the actual sculpt on it is really great. We're going to move on, though, to what I think is the probably my f more favorite out of the two, even though the stoic looks, looks really good. And that's this head because it's a little bit more expressive. There's the, the kind of smirking gambit. This is gambit, right? To me, this is like the look you want to use. I don't know, man. That smirking sculpt is just very well done. Again, all the paintwork in this is just as good as the first head, so there's no problem there. He is, however, missing his signature cigarette. Gambit, and no Marvel character for that matter, is going to be having any cigarettes anymore or stogies for Wolverine, none of that stuff going forward. You're just not getting it anymore. This is a Disney mandate, I believe, for Marvel, so it's just not going to happen. Although, I must say, this is really dope. You know, I hate it when a figure like this comes along that doesn't necessarily fit in with my collection, but it's so damn good looking on the shelf that... I may not have a choice but to keep this. Moving right along to the articulation and the outfit. Please bear in mind that there are a couple of nits here, so don't jump down my throat because I'm going to try to give it to you guys directly. No bullshit on this channel. Gambit looks really great, has awesome shelf presence. His arms go up about that high, right, without any problem of them coming down. Maybe a little bit in that one, but then again, every figure is different. You can rotate his arm up. He has the double joints in the elbow, although there will be a little bit of a hindrance because of the jacket. The jacket is really thick and also has a wire in it that runs down here and also runs down the top of the collar. So you could really mess around and get some, I don't know, really cool poses and stuff like that. Like, you know, then again, the wire could have been a little bit better, a little bit stronger, but look, you guys get the idea, right? Nice blowing in the wind effect. Anyways, moving along to the chest and armor piece. This is where you get a little bit of hindrance in the articulation here. But I knew this going into this years ago when they showed this figure off. You do get a really good side-to-side -side motion on Gambit, though, so that's fine. You're not going to get really much of an ab crunch. You get very, very slight movement. Just a little, though. What they could have done right here is right along here, they could have put a seam 
right where this armor piece meets this armor piece, and you kind of you could have got a little bit of overlap that wouldn't necessarily hurt the figure or hurt the design at all. So right over in here, right over in here, could have been like two separate armored pieces that kind of overlaid onto one another. You can remove this armor piece. There are videos of it on YouTube. I'm not removing mine. I think it looks fine just the way it is. And the color on it is very, very well done. It's the classic Gambit outfit. I mean, really, what more can you ask for? All the lines up in here in the blue are very well painted, and it has a nice little bit of a shine to it. You got the X-Men thing there on the buckle. Now, in the outfit, on the pants, you got this crazy little design Right, that's like very Mez code, but also similar to the way Gambit does. Over here, they're actually colored, so you get those, the, you know, the, the colored stripes running down the side of his pants as you do in the comics and in the cartoons and stuff. So that's really good. Also, the way this design is run, a lot of times people worry about these things peeling over here off the actual uh, fabric. You ain't gonna have to worry about that too much because, as you could see, in the bend line, even right up in here, they're kind of separated. So when you pull the, the leg up, you ain't going to have to worry about that, you know, kind of running interference and stuff. Now, as far as the split goes, he should have had a little bit more of a split. The split goes about that far. Remember, Gambit is an acrobat. He is, an, a, you know, a guy that should be able to throw really high and crazy kicks. He actually can't get his leg up as, some, as far as some of the other figures. At least I'm not going to push it on this review. And usually this knee pad is connected to the bottom of the boot here, and the articulation would have been behind this. It's not. They just put it right onto the fabric there. So when you bend his leg, it comes out as two different pieces. They could have still had the double jointed and had that just kind of sticking out, but maybe that was breaking off in the factory. So who the hell knows? As far as ankle articulation goes, there's very little side to side, just enough. And eh, just see that? Very, very little. Because of the way the boots are designed, that's a little bit of a hindrance, but they do kind of work side to side. And they look really nice when put straight up and down, right? You get the double jointed in the knees there too. And you get, let's see, a swivel up here in the thigh. There is no boot swivel. I don't feel a boot swivel, and I don't really want to push it. This I'm kind of worried about. Don't start grabbing your leg and pulling and yanking up over here, because this will probably pop off if I had to guess. All right? It looks great. The color of the coat is perfect and appropriate. Maybe it could have been a little bit darker. Maybe. I don't know. But as far as I'm concerned, I think he looks pretty damn great. This portion of the review, we're going to try to kill two birds with one stone. Give you guys an idea of what he looks like without his jacket on. Not that I would display him like this. And how all the accessories kind of look with him holding them in his hand. Now... As you can see over here, he has the similar stripes that we showed you on his pants. He also has them on his arm here. And here's something to watch out for. He has these designs in his outfit, right? Up over here and in here. And when you're pulling the, the coat off, be aware that there's no stitching up in here as far as the sleeve goes. So as you pull it out, this can catch the inside of the coat and rip it. So be real careful. Do the one arm and then the other thing and kind of just shimmy it off and you'll be just fine. Taking a closer look, look, zero posing effort, and he still looks dynamite as hell. There's his card effect in the hand like that. That's the single card effect. Here's the multiple card effect. And he has a hand. This is what kind of bothers me. He has a lot of hands for holding cards in his left hand and almost nothing for his right. I'm sure you can get them to fit into his right hand, but the card holding hand should have came in both hands. So that's a little bit of a nitpick that I have there. And that's that in that hand. Then he has his multiple cards you can kind of put in, right? Get him in there, kind of really work him in there. And then you can have him with like multiple cards being shown and him not using his power. And you also have the single card you can kind of just slip in there. But you got to kind of get it to where it grips between his, his fingers and stuff and you can get him like that, right? Dynamite. Now, as far as his feet going flat on the ground, as we were talking about before the ankle pivot, that's about as good as you're going to get. At least that's about as good as I was able to get for this review. All right, we're taking a look at the accessories here a little bit. Most of his accessories are hand-related, so bear with me. This is really cool. It's nice that you can see his finger kind of coming through that, and you can see the color of the way the natural light in the room permeates through his, his charged card effect. This is all one solid color. It's some kind of translucent, hot pinkish-looking color molding of some kind but it works really well and it, it gives it that actual real color that he gets from the uh from the comics and stuff so that looks really well done okay this is him with the single card like as if he's throwing it out let's see if we can get this to focus again for you bam there you have it him throwing out the single card now be careful don't grab from here grab it from right around the wrist those of you mezco um those of you you know, Mezco veterans know exactly what I'm talking about here. 
Now, Gambit pretty much only throws his cards for some reason from his uh, from his left hand. He has no right hand throwing card motion thing, and that kind of bothers me. I gotta be honest, you know, he's ambidexterous. He should be able to use both hands. He should have came with more card effects. This one's really nice. I know a lot of guys like I haven't been able to get this to actually look right. This looks really dynamite with very minimal effort. He's actually throwing from the hip here. And you can manipulate it in certain ways. There you go for the as far as the molding go molding goes. And the cards, a little nitpick I have, and I'm sure everyone else has, is that there's actual the cards themselves are not actual cards. They're just all one translucent color. And that's kind of beat. They should have actually been, you know, cards, so to speak, at the top there. But what are you gonna do? Again, he's kind of hip throwing here. You can have him like kind of throwing up at somebody. Right, And if you wanted to kind of emulate the Sideshow statue that just came out, because his hand is mostly covered, obviously you could see his thumb here. Right, I don't know if the, why the hell this thing keeps going in and out of damn focus. Just flip his arm around. You really can't see. And it would almost be like he's kind of like throwing his hand over with the cards. And you can kind of have him come in with like an overhead strike. And that looks really awesome too. So again, guys, mess around with your figures. Look as if he's throwing like a baseball. You know what I'm saying? That looks really Keeping cool. it going in the accessories department, here's just a layout pretty much of everything he comes with, and we're going to take a look closer at some of the things, right? Some of the accessories, right? Everything is hearts related, apparently. The Ace of Hearts again, and these are all hearts here, right? It's He's got the Royal Flush in his hand, which is pretty cool. That's a nice little level of detail there. Although, for some reason, I think I would have preferred an Ace of Spades, but I guess they figure a Gambit stealing the hearts of Rogue and... You know whoever else but these are these are pretty great playing cards and even the actual ace is upside you know it's facing both ways so you get like it's it's there and then there just the way a regular playing card is supposed to look and the print on the back is pretty damn accurate so that works well we took a look at this before but here's another close look of just how it looks with the finger coming through there here's the other one with the thumb coming through and you can see how it's molded around the hand, so that's really, really smart and nice and adds to the realism. Again, they should have had the cards inside here. But it gl listen, when the light hits this thing, it looks friggin' phenomenal, especially in pictures and, and the way I'm showing this here. Wow, it looks great. All right, so here's an open hand. I don't really like to focus on hands too much, but here's an expressive open hand that he comes with. And he also comes with two closed fists, a fist for holding his staff in his uh, left hand. The staff itself... Right? Be careful when putting this in and out of his hand. I saw somebody snap it right over here. Guy was like, look, I'm trying to take it and push it in through here. Don't do that. Go to where the smaller part is, open the hand up, and, and kind of get it in there. You know? And press here. Press where the, the molding is thicker, not where it's at its thinnest uh, point, And you'll be just fine. I really wish Gambit would have came with a couple of more right hands, again, like I had said earlier, for throwing cards. Although, you want to know what? It's like I'm crying with two, you know, loaves of bread under my arms. It, it's fine. Gambit looks really nice. He displays amazing. He's the, the display is really, really nice with this figure, but he's not a perfect, perfect figure. Again, his feet do not fit firmly on the floor when you try to pose him. So if you're going to do a dynamic pose, make sure you put like a little stand here or maybe use the Mezco stand or another one of those clear stands from Stony stands or something like that, and you'll be fine with it. Uh, you can get some really nice posability out of him, though. There's not much articulation hindrance over here, as you would think. And what they did was they sacrificed... The articulation for just something that looks really freaking awesome, all right? So, he's going to look dope in your collection, but he is not a five-star figure. He is not Mezco of the year for me so far, but he's really nice. And it, it, he just, dis these fucking things display so damn good. Look, man, sorry about the cursing, but I got to keep it real. Thanks for taking a look at the video, and we'll catch you on the next episode. Take it easy, everybody.